Yellow Jacobin with a Week 9 Minnesota Vikings preview. So without further ado, let's get into it. So yeah, the Minnesota Vikings are hosting the Detroit Lions Week 9, Sunday, noon on CBS, at U.S. Main Stadium. So yeah, let's get into this. So the first thing that I will say here is, this is going to be an interesting game because three former Vikings are coming back to play. J. Ron Kurs, Adrian Peterson, which was interesting, and also, I don't know if you've heard of this guy, former defensive end, you know, he was kind of good and... All that stuff. Uh, might not have heard of him. Everson Griffin ring a bell, anybody? And, of course, he is pissed off. I don't know if he heard about this, but uh, earlier in the week, Mike Zimmer made a comment about him being a good player, and Everson Griffin basically lost his nuts. So <laughs> and I'm sitting back here like, uh, fuck. No, because that's just how Everson Griffin plays. He plays pissed off. He plays with a chip on his shoulder. Always has, always will. That's why he's arguably, in my opinion, one of the more underrated defensive ends over probably the last, I'd say, five, eight seasons or so. Especially ever since he took over for Jared Allen after we let Jared Allen walk in free agency. Well, but yeah, I mean, this is interesting because as you know, Everson Griffin originally signed with the Cowboys, but then the Cowboys ironically enough traded him to the Lions, so regardless, we were going to play Everson Griffin at least once this season. <laughs> so yeah, Riley Reef, Brian O'Neill. Yeah. remember practice last couple of seasons or so? <laughs> yeah, have fun, boys. Because <laughs> if we let him go off, ugh. Cousins is going to be in a lot of trouble. A lot of trouble. Which then also brings me to my next point. Kirk Cousins. Play within your offense. Don't try to be a hero. Remember, guys, what worked well against Green Bay last week was Dalvin Cook to start the game. A little Dalvin Cook here, a little Dalvin Cook there, you know, maybe a couple little short to intermediate passes, get five, six yards of play, boom, 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 move down the field and eventually bust big ones. And potentially take kill shots later on in the game. But to get to that point, you've got to build it up, build it up, and then you can attack. Don't try to play Superman. Because we all know what happens when Kirk Cousins has to play Superman. It usually doesn't end well. And yet, for some reason, the Vikings, or just Kirk Cousins in general, always wants to do that. But Anyway, so yeah. Because again, the offense is set up to annihilate the Lions defense, honestly. I mean, <laughs> their defense... At this point, really doesn't scare me too much. To be fair, though, I really haven't actually seen the Detroit Lions defense recently, but to be fair, they've had a lot of issues on their defense. However, though, they do have a lot of new pieces, too, though, so again, don't overlook the Lions, please, because, well, we overlooked the Falcons, and we all know how that fucking went. <sighs> but anyway, <laughs> yeah, you basically, anyway. So, with all that being said, though, play within the offense. And also, moving on to the defensive side, I mean, well, boys, that's just, I mean, to be fair, though, their offense, for the most part, is a lot of, like, Hawkinson and Marvin Jones. No idea on if Galladay is going to be in or not, and also Stafford was on COVID list, so... It might not even be Matthew Stafford that plays Sunday. It could be David Blau. It could be whoever the heck their backup is at this point, because I don't even really know at this point. However, though, with the Detroit offense, they do have a couple of running backs in on Johnson 
DeAndre Swift, who are very good running backs if they get the chance. However, though, they also have this guy named Adrian Peterson. Does that name sound familiar, guys? Granted, I don't really see him, I mean, I haven't really seen a lot of Lions games this year or even, like, really clips or snippets, per se, other than the Atlanta Falcons choking it again last week. But anyway, <laughs> so, yeah, I mean, to be fair, though, the Lions offense has really been about the same formula over the last probably four or five seasons. A lot of passes, which, I mean, makes sense considering poor Matthew Stafford. I mean, he hasn't had a run game since day one. <laughs> So he has to almost throw for 5,000 fucking yards in its season because, well, he has basically no help. So, yeah, I mean, I can make a whole video on Matthew Stafford, but he just never had really any help around him. And not to mention the Vikings a couple seasons ago at U.S. Bank Stadium had, what was it? I don't know if you remember this game at all, but the defensive line went off and we had 10 sacks on Matthew Stafford. So it's one of those things where if Stafford gets into a rhythm, yikes. However, though, you can also get to Stafford pretty easily because, well, their offensive line, I mean, it's, it's similar to the Vikings in that it's, well, streaky. There'll be some games where it's literally a revolving fucking door, you know, like those like mall doors that just rotate around and around and around. Or they're like a top five offensive line in the league and a brick wall. So... It'll be interesting to see here. Because, again, the Vikings pass rush, I mean, again, our defense is basically turning into a mash unit at this point. So, oh, sweet Jesus. But anyway, <laughs> now moving on to sort of like the meat and potatoes of this, I mean, yeah, the Vikings can definitely win this game. It's definitely a winnable game. However, though, the big picture here is if the Vikings win, we are now at 3-5. and five, Starting to crawl our way out of the bottom of the north. And potentially moving our way up. And if the schedule is right, the next week we go to Chicago. Which, again, is never an easy win. But realistically, after that, I mean, there's some winnable games there. I mean, the Cowboys, the Jags, you know, the Bears, obviously, because, again, the Bears, at this point, are turning into the typical Bears of the last few seasons, look really great for, like, the first five or six games, and then fall apart in the middle. <laughs> but anyway, so, I mean, realistically, looking at the schedule over the next, you know, after this week, a lot, there's been some rumors that if the Vikings can take care of business get a little momentum going they could be seven and five up to seven and five going to into tampa however though i'm not going to say anything like that just because again well there's a lot of what ifs there and there's a lot of things that have to happen but one game at a time fellas if we can get back yeah, like I say, if we can get out of, you know, just get a couple more wins going here, we're not out of it because, again, that extra playoff spot is huge. They added yet another playoff spot, which will be huge because, realistically, if you can get to 9-7, and 10-6 range, you have a shot to make it. However, though, if the NFC West is anything to... Well, minus the Niners, unfortunately, but then again... You want to talk about a mass unit at this point. Holy Jesus. I'm pretty sure three quarters of their team has been on some form of IR this year. Including basically their whole team from last year. But anyway. So yeah, I mean, realistically, the Vikings... Like I say, that was a huge win last week to get, you know, to beat Green Bay. Big momentum win. Now, build on it. Keep it going. And who knows? Because as a Vikings fan, a lot of Vikings fans will say tank. But if we have a chance to actually make noise, go for it. So, I mean, <laughs> like I say, we'll just see what happens. But the season's not over by any means. So until we meet again, 
This is Jacob. Also stay tuned because I may have another pickup coming in the next week. And it's probably one of the more controversial players I've picked up recently, but, uh, well, <laughs> we'll worry about that when we get to it, so. You have a wonderful night, and skull.